In this lesson, we'll build the wing bones. Let's go to our top view. And we'll make sure we're viewing our mesh and wireframe so we can see our bone placement. We'll want to make sure that our bones are evenly placed in the wing mesh. So to do so, I'll go ahead and show you a trick for making sure that will happen. Let's head over to Create, Curve, and we'll use the Draw Linear tool. What we'll basically do is create a point for each root that we'll have in our wing skeleton. That's going to be for the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist, and then one to end the chain. At that point, we can right click to exit the tool, go to point mode, and reposition these if we need to. I'll switch the move tool to global. And we'll just make sure that these points are evenly placed in the covert mesh. Okay, that looks pretty good. What we could also do is go to our perspective camera and make sure that the curve is centered. It sure is. All right, great. So from there, heading back to our top view, we'll now rebuild this curve so we can go ahead and have more points to snap our bones to. We'll basically want enough points for each feather, and by doing so, and by creating a control for each of those bones, that'll give us more flexibility in the wing performance. So with the curve selected, heading back over to Curve, we'll choose Fit on Curve. Let's head over to Display, Attributes, Points. So we can see how many points we're working with. I'll set the subdivision count to 18, something pretty high, and then we can delete any points we need to. For the degree, we're going to switch this back to linear. This is how we're going to want to draw out our chains we're about to create so that they're evenly placed. All right, so once we're satisfied with our settings, we can now go ahead and clean up the curve by choosing Delete. And we're now ready to start building our chain. Another thing you'd want to check for is any points that you may not need. So for instance, there's actually a few points that we can remove. And how we base that is counting every point and every feather that should correspond with that point, which will eventually be a bone. So for this first section, we can actually get rid of one point. I'll get rid of this second one here. Just delete that. The next section, that's actually fine. We'll want five points here. In between, that is. And the last section, we'll want four points in between. Right now, we have five. So we can go ahead and get rid of this last point. And to make sure that these points are even along this last section of the curve, what we could always do is go to our Move tool. We'll switch this to Local so we can move down the curve. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. Just modify their placement. Just kind of slide them down just a little bit more. Okay, that looks pretty good. Great, so from there, what I'll now do is go ahead and hide the wing mesh. I'll press 2 to head over to our Animate Toolbar so we can go to our Skeleton Tool, Draw 2D Chain. Let's make sure Snap to Points is active. I'll just go to the list right now at Centers. So what I like to do is go ahead and uncheck everything, save for the one we need to work with, which in this case is Points. Let's go ahead and make sure that's checked on. We can now hold down control and start to snap our bones to each point. We're going to create a chain for each section, and this is so that we can create the expanding and collapsing functionality, which will automate. So I'll go ahead and middle click to exit 
or end this chain, but so we could still work with the joint tool. Again, we we'll want to snap bones for the next section, middle click. Do that once more for the wrist, and we'll right click to exit the tool. Now it's kind of difficult to select between our roots and effectors for a few of these. So what I like to do is change their icon just to something that's going to be easier to work with. So I'll go ahead and select the each root. Hitting enter, let's go ahead and switch their icon to rings and we could also bring down their size to let's say something like 0 0.4. And that'll make them easier to work with. Now for the effectors, selecting them, We're going to go ahead and change their icon to box. We'll bring their size down to 0.6. Great. All right, so the next step is to go ahead and start to rename these. We always want to rename our objects so that the next person using our file doesn't get a headache trying to find things. So starting with our shoulder root, we can always rename this to root underscore SHLD, just abbreviating shoulder 01. The next bone, that's going to be BN SHLD underscore A01, and we'll just rename the rest of these bones alphabetically. So I'll go ahead and copy this name. Every object that will be tied to our envelope will have a prefix of BN just for clarity so we know that that bone is going to deform our mesh. Even if it's something like an implicit geometry, we'll still use BN. All right, so going to the next bone, paste. It's going to be shoulder B. And then C. And so on. So you kind of get the idea here. When we get to the effector, that's going to be EFF, in this case, shoulder, 0, 1. So for the elbow, going to its root, that's going to be root, elbow, 0, 1. Go ahead and copy the name, go to the bone, paste. That's going to be BN, elbow, underscore A, and so on. So the next one, of course, will be... B. That's basically how we're going to rename the rest of our bones. So feel free to use the final file of this lesson if you need to as a guide. All right, so what we want to do from here is make sure that everything is going to perform right by simply taking those roots and parenting them to their effectors they're connected to. So for instance, the wrist, let's go ahead and take its root. I'll go to the parent tool. The hotkey for that is the forward slash. And then we'll want to middle click the parent, which in this case, it's going to be the effector for the elbow. Okay, and then from there, selecting the next root, which is for the elbow, go ahead and hit the forward slash, hotkey, and middle click the shoulder effector. So from there what we could now do is go ahead and middle click on our shoulder root to grab the entire branch and then head over to select and choose select child nodes go to our rotate tool I'll go ahead and switch this to add so we can get an idea of how our flexibility is going to look. Let's go ahead and head over to our perspective camera all right, great. So we're going to see some really nice results actually in the following lesson when we envelope the mesh to this chain. Now what I'd like to do from here is head over to the Explorer. I'm actually going to close out this property window. And we, what we could do is go ahead and create another transform group for our bones. So I'll go to the shoulder. I'll press Shift forward slash. We can rename this to Bone01. 
And again, this will not be transformed. So let's go ahead and get rid of all of those keyable properties or keyable transform parameters. We'll also want to make sure that this is stored underneath our model. Now the curve that we use to create our chain, we no longer need that. Its purpose has been fulfilled. <laughs> so we can go ahead and get rid of that. Great. Well, that's basically the bones for our wing mesh. Let's go ahead and switch over to X-ray mode and the perspective. Great. All right, so make sure that the rest of these have been renamed. And then the next lesson, we're ready to envelope.